Ladies and gentlemen, Whew, it's been a while, but here we are, Jin Gaming, doing a little mini tournament here of the week of Valentine's Day. Happy belated Valentine's Day to all. And we do have a round of 16 match between teams Lion, who you will see some pretty big names on, I will say that, going up against Team Vitality. A uh, relatively unknown team, haven't really seen them around the scene, but they will be taking on Lion here to advance, and this will be, I believe, a best of three series. This is game number one, a little delayed, but we are here and ready to go. With me today, first, I'm the four-court jester. With me today is Asway from Game Ache, although I hear Game Ache has kind of fallen apart, but what's up, Asway? Hello, four-court. Yeah, it kind of, you know, it's a, it's a dead project, but... It was fun while it lasted. Alright, so just going to tell our lovely spectators there that we are streaming. Keep up your manners. On our camera is Trask. I do hope I'm saying your name right, Trask. But Trask it will be doing our camera. We are eight minutes delayed, so hopefully you will be hearing our voices very soon. We do have some bands coming out. Who had first band here, Asway? From my understanding... Lion had first band, and the first band was Sandwraith, which, you know, not really a surprising band whatsoever. Sandwraith has gained a ton of popularity over the last few months. Being, you know, a hero, if you have him on your team, you win. And if he's on the other team, you just lose. So he's really strong late game. It's kind of incredible how strong he actually can be. He is definitely a very big late game carry to contend with. Now, he kind of, I do remember when he became super popular, and he just kind of hasn't really left that top tier pick, has he? Not at all. I was watching um some old Dota, or Han replays, sorry, when EG used him back, you know, really early beta against 5 when they had, you know, Wildebeest, and he was as strong back then as he is now. He declined in popularity, but he's always been, you know, a top-tier pick. But as of late, he, you know, came back out of the shadows, and he's dominating again. Indeed. Following that standard, we do have that Thunderbringer, so we're not going to be seeing him with all his lightning goodness. He is the destroyer of tri-lanes with all that burst damage, and we just do not want to deal with him today. What about Bomba Bombardier? He's actually really been staying up there in the top tier as well, hasn't he? He's really good. The amount of nuke he brings into a team fight and like his roaming potential as well is just so so strong. His if you get Staff the Master and Refresher on him, he can win a team fight on his own. His damage is, you know, kind of unmatchable when he gets that kind of farm for being a ranged carry. Indeed, I can only imagine two bombing runs just landing on anyone's head at that point. Uh, Dr. Repulsor has also been banned. Now, he's been a pick that has not really been favored at all uh, for many a month, just way back before even DreamHack 2010, and that was back in November. I don't think I've really seen him in a top-tier game in ages. He's just continually permabanned out of everything, and that leads us to a swift blade. You know, with Dr. Repulsor, I don't really get it. People will ban him, but if he's not banned, they won't play him. It, I think it's a wasted ban, to be honest. No team will play him, even if he's not banned. So why ban him? I've seen very few teams actually use him. I couldn't tell you, sir. It's just, I guess, a preference at this point. Uh, but let's just finish up the bands here. So Swiftblade is out of the running, and that leaves us with a Wretched Hag. Empath also banned, and apparently there's a little bit of discussion about the auto-banning there, but Empath, very strong support hero, just came out. She is the newest hero, and uh, to go with that, Mimrodon was the last ban out of that as well. A very big support-oriented hero as well with double disables, as well as uh, that ultimate of his that just deals pure magic damage. So so that will end off our bans, and now we do have the picks coming out. First pick went to Swindle Melons. He went for a chipper. Is Swindle Melons known for a chipper? Asway, it's been a while for me here. Yeah, I've you know been talking to Swindle Melons recently and watching a lot of his scrims, and he values chipper. Very like a chipper is a top tier pick for him, regardless of what heroes aren't you know banned. Like if Sandwraith isn't banned, he'll still pick chipper over Sandwraith. Swindlemons is actually really, really good on Shepard, so he's most likely going to be playing that Shepard. Can you shed any light on who exactly Kirby Chan is? It has to be a Smurf. 15-5-15, one game played. 
Um, any idea? I have absolutely no idea who it is. To be honest, like I've never seen. He plays a lot of casual mode, from what I can tell. <laughs> One game. <laughs> that, that's about it. I see like twenty-ish games of casual mode for him. Uh, maybe it just public game. There's only show. one. Ah, uh, that's probably the reason. All right. Well, Kirby Chan, he's taking himself Gladiator. Likely, he'll be sticking to that as well. One game played to his record, and uh, uh, very likely going to be sticking with the Gladiator. TKO, uh, who I believe was on Team Totallyrad.com, he's going to be on the Hellbringer at least for now. We will see what they end up picking. We do see the Kraken as well as the Slither there on the the Shadow pick. Slither indeed going to be taking that. Have to wonder if it's going to be in the support role, if we're going to be throwing Hellbringer into the support role. But on the flip side, Vitality leading the pack there is going to be that Pebbles and Flint Beastwood combination to a Pimp Slayer. Gotta love the art on the Pimp Slayer and a Pharaoh. So I'm looking at some pretty extreme initiation on the Legion side. Yeah, definitely. You know, Pebbles will most likely be going mid, getting that early level 6 and rushing that portal key. They're probably going to try lane Flint with uh, Witch Slayer and then put Pharaoh up top. You know, Flint try lanes, they can be either really, really passive, which is, you know, the try lanes in Dota. Flint try lanes are always passive in Dota. But in Han, they're really aggressive, and I'm not exactly sure why. You know, Behe would actually fit really well into this try lane. Behe, which in Flint, is very strong. Well, that's a cut off your escape route. That's a stun and the uh, morph and two, you know, Flint Beastwood bullets. So I can understand that. Pharaoh likely going to be taken solo with a Pebbles mid, I, which I have to agree. Uh, looks like they're not going to go with the Behemoth. They're going to go with the Magmus instead. So same kind of idea. And there's the mass ready up. So we are good to go, ladies and gentlemen, as we do have Team Lion taking on Vitality. Round of 16, Jin Gaming here on... What is today? Tuesday, February 15th. Yes. The Hellborn picks are very interesting. I have no idea how they're going to lane this. I assume they're going to try lane with the Kraken, Gladiator, and Hellbringer and have Slither solo. Would be my understanding, but I have no idea what they're going to do. That does sound like a very odd try lane, but I do see TKO. He's going to be heading down south with at least Kraken. We got two headed for mid, but that just might be a faint. Slither may or may not stay. Gladiator may or may not stay for sure, though. We do have Swindle up top with the Chipper, and he's going to be all alone as it does not look like the Legion have any interest in the top lane at this time. Flint is forging his new path into the jungle all alone. He has to be very careful not to run into both the Hellborn here down in the bottom lane, but it looks like they're content to hang around the tower. We do have those two in the middle by the rune and I don't think we're actually going to see any kind of level one action right off the bat. Yeah, it doesn't look like it all at all. Swindle Melons is known to run two mid and two bot one top. He's not really a big fan of the whole tri lane thing. He'd rather run two two one. He finds it more um you know not exactly sure what the word is. He values it more than a tri lane. Put it up for lack of term. Well, it does look like they are going to be backing up. Pebble's likely going to be heading to the mid, and that's going to leave the tri lane down here. So we are not going to be seeing a tri lane, at least initially, from the Hellborn, as we do have two mid. Um, we do see Slither going to be doing some body blocking with Kirby Chan. It's not going to work exactly as well as they might have hoped, but every little bit counts at this point. We do still have the Legion tri lane down south. They will be taking on Kraken and Hellbringer. So Kraken going to supposed to be filling in for, I guess, a semi carry roll, or maybe we're going to be focusing a lot of those last hits to the Hellbringer instead. Still unsure as to which role they want to play, but right now they do have a Mexican standoff there in the jungle as Flint starts picking up some last hits. Now with two mid from the Hellborn, that's going to keep Pebbles down almost to a crippling degree. I mean, that's a that's a very nasty lane to look at, Asway. Yeah, it definitely is. I'm Sure, they're going to try and get Flint level 2 as fast as possible and send Witch Slayer mid or Magmus mid. Because Pebbles is going to get completely shut down by that Slither. 
and he won't be able to get any type of farm, any type of level, and he'll be really, really useless. And having a Pebbles on your team that can't do anything isn't really what you want. Yeah, if his if his farm is crippled and he can't become that ganking machine that you want him to become, yeah, he's uh, pretty much not going to be doing a whole lot for the game, uh, as as they say. So we'll have to keep an eye on them. I'm expecting Legion was going to be sending someone there. Down bottom, a lot of damage going down on, uh, I think it's Freak Z, but it's Kraken, or Z Freak, and it looks like he may or may, yeah, he's going to get out of this. All right, we do have a ward of sight here in the lane, a very aggressive ward coming out of the Legion, so they're going to be keeping tabs on both Hellbringer and Kraken, but this tri lane is doing an amazing job of keeping them away from the experience and away from the last hits. Um, they're definitely going to be starting to feel that pain very soon. They're actually, I personally think they're doing a poor job. The lane's slowly, slowly pushing up in favor of Hellborn, and that's not something they want whatsoever. Like, the two supports aren't sitting by the creeps to deny at all. They're just trying to put out some pressure, but they can't get a kill. See what Kraken? You can't really kill a Kraken. You can go on him, but you're not going to kill him. There's no point in trying to go on the Kraken. You might as well go on the Hellbringer if you're going to go on one of the two heroes. The Hellbringer definitely sounds a little squishier. He doesn't even have a life void. In fact, they're still level 1, which is uh, a little saddening. Flint is level 3. The Trilaners are out, uh, at least I'd expect them to be either jungling or stacking the jungle at this point. Uh, we don't have either method going on right now, And but the Trilaners, they're also level 1. So uh, all the experience right now being funneled to this Flint Beastwood. As for creep kill, 16 leading the pack is going to be T-Swift here. He's up to 16 on that. Flint 17 is on Kirby Chan in the mid, so we know who's being funneled there as well. A little bit of action up top as well. We've had Chipper and Pharaoh going back and forth a little bit. No kills yet, three minutes into this game. But uh, you, you, we, we know that something has to start happening very quickly. That poor Pebbles has barely gotten anything mid. He has his bottle, though, coming to him now, so I guess... That will allow him to kind of, you know, try and control runes, but with a slither there, he won't be able to do anything. So, with... I'm still... Which slayer should still definitely go mid? They've already won their tri lane bottom. Hellbringer's still level 1. It's just a waste of him being there now. Oh, the first blood, first blood, there we go. A great play there by Dirty Mobs. He just ran right into the slither, did the combo, and tossed him back into the tower, picking him up that first blood, and brings him right back into this game. So all that extra farm is now made up by a skill on that slither. But yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, like, why haven't we sent any support here to the mid? Uh, because Pebbles is just really, really hurting now. He did make up for it with that kill, which is a fairly impressive kill, but I really would have expected some kind of support to come mid by this point. I don't know what slither was doing. That was such poor positioning on his part. He just, all he has to do is sit behind Gladiator, and if... Uh, kind of cut out there, Asway. You still there, with buddy? All right. Well, Asway will join us again in a second. We do have Feral again going down here in the mid. Or not Feral. Sorry, Pebbles. But I don't think it's actually going to go to his calling this round. He goes down to the combination poison and the gladiator whip. So halftime picking up a kill there, and that's going to put us with an empty mid lane. Asway timing out. Oh, that's just not good at all. And. Um, yeah, right now, that's uh, so much for all that big advantage Pebbles was able to uh, grab out of that. So he goes down to a revenge kill here, halftime picking up that kill. Gladiator going to do a little bit of free farm. We do have Pebbles coming back. There he is with a new pair of boots. So, sweet deal. I like boots. He likes boots. And that's going to be that. Down south, the tri lane still going hard as we do have the Megmus and Witch Slide. They're going to try to go on this Kraken with some Chain CC and the damage coming out. That's going to be an easy kill right there. Two CCs with the damage output of Swift. And uh, he goes down right now. So 2-1 is the score in favor of Vitality Gaming over Lion, which is a little surprising at this point. Early, early game being taken here by Vitality.
And I mean, I know we we all know some of the names there of Lion, but uh, Vitality again, I haven't really seen them around, but so far I like what they're doing. So Asway has reconnected, and uh, we're just going to take a quick look here at Pebbles. He's going to run for the rune, run for the rune, going to get the haste, going to avoid the pit trap, even going to be uh, just running on tossing the, the gladiator away. He's going to get off the stun. Megma's going to be coming in, and that's going to be a kill right there on that Hellbringer. So poor, poor. Poor timing on the Hellbringer. Hasted, uh, hasted Pebbles here. He's going to try to chase down Gladiator. Oh, look at that. Witchlayer missing the graveyard. But <laughs> Gladiator, not too sure he knew he was there. And I don't think this is going to result in a kill. Actually, this might result in a kill on halftime. No, we aren't going to have Witchlayer get away from that safely. So I'm going to take this quick opportunity to go grab Asway. Bring him back into the Ventrilo channel. Yeah, sorry, my internet, you know, randomly restarts once in a while, and I have no idea why, and my ISP can't figure out why it restarts. No but worries. I'm back and stable now for the rest of the night. So we are now up to 3-1 for Vitality. They were able to take out the Hellbringer at that rune gank, so Pebbles was able to pick up that haste, and between the combination of the support from Bottom, who was the first time leaving that lane, I might add, uh, they were able to... Uh, DPS down that Hellbringer. Now a very quiet lane up top between the Slither, or sorry, between the Chipper and the Pharaoh. They're kind of just going back and forth, not really doing too much. What could they be doing better? Do you think, Asway? There's really not much they can do. Pharaoh can start roaming now. He almost has his van Helm the Black Legion, and he doesn't have boots though, which is kind of odd. He should have went for boots and started to roam towards bottom and mid. But I guess he'd rather just keep farming. With already having, you know, kind of an advantage in the game being up two kills. No reason for him to roam. Well, speaking of farming, I'm just taking a quick look at the boards here. 43 kills on Swift, but 41 on Swindle Melons. Uh, so, I mean, the last hit kings are coming out here. We still got 39 here on Kirby Chan. He has a... Yeah, he doesn't have a, a kill under his belt, but he does have an assist. So, I mean, the gold situation is slightly in favor here of the Hellborn. So, I have been getting spammed by a couple of people, and apparently Kirby Chan is Wack, W-A-C, from DRD. One of DRD's best players. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if he'll appreciate being outed like that. Um, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I don't think he'll mind... He'll talk to me if he doesn't like it. <laughs> Alright, so Kirby Chan is also, whacked from DRD. TKO was from DRD, right? TKO was also from DRD. You know, both kind of nice guys to talk to. And the Kraken Z Freak is Swindle Melons' brother. Oh, interesting. Uh, what else is interesting here is this middle kill going down on this Magmus. So we do have Kirby Chan picking that up with that whip. And now we do have a big uh, big damage potential here for Witchler. He's going to get in on that. But look at Pharaoh jumping right in there catching Z Freak. And he's going to... Oh, look at that. No, he's not going to get out of that. He took a Pebbles with him. And uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. The Pharaoh Snot Rocket, however, is going to be enough to take out the Gladiator. And Flint's going to be chasing down this Slither. So that's going to put us now 6 to 2. Two, uh, for Vitality Gaming, which is uh, a little interesting at this point. 6-2, uh, to two, they're really taking the hurt here to Lion. Yeah, I'm very surprised that they're losing so bad. I've never, you know, honestly, I've never heard of this VIT Gaming, VIT team, until today. And knowing Swindle Melons and TKO and Wack being, you know, kind of good players, I thought they'd play a lot better than they are right now. So I'm kind of disappointed in that, and especially seeing a Kraken pick. You know, they, they should be winning, but apparently they're not playing as well as they should be. Well, as the comments here do mention, we haven't really had Swindle actually leave his lane yet, and he is level 8. Uh, he is leading the pack for his team, 305 gold a minute and 400 experience a minute. So, I mean, he might be able to turn some heads here if he has enough farm, and he has 61 creep kills, so he's really keeping at it. So maybe he'll be enough to turn it, 
Maybe. We'll have to see. I don't think Vitality Gaming is actually going to let him live after this. Uh, we do have the Witch Slayer going in. Oh, look at that Feral Ult actually landing on a creep. That's a little embarrassing. But we do got the Morph going off because we do have those Striders. Out goes the Graveyard into the Feral Mummy Wall. But Chipper is just not going down. He just has a lot of hit points at this point. And now Feral has to be very careful. Out goes the Rocket. That's going to miss. But uh, Chipper, look at that, just survives that gang. In comes the Slither. They really want to take out Feral at this point. And the denied. Oh, good deny right there from Witch Slayer. Uh, I'm not too sure he's going to get denied. And oh, he's good. Looks like he'll live for now. A good save there by the Magmas. So I don't know. We tried to kill that that chipper, and it almost resulted in two deaths on Vitality. So uh, it, uh, I wouldn't say it's quite over yet. No, not at all. Chipper is a very very strong hero, and I can see why Swindle Melons. Loves playing Chipper and loves Chipper on a team. Focus Buffer is such a strong ability. It's probably one of the most overpowered abilities in the game if used on the right hero. And Staff the Master on his ultimate just does so much damage. And it's such a good slow in a team fight. Yeah, with the Staff of the Master, you can definitely. It's like, uh, what, 70% slow or something silly like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's pretty overpowered. So he's going to go right for that. Uh, we did just see the pebbles here in the mid. Uh, he really likes to toss his opponents back into the tower, which is a really smart move because a lot of the people... Oh, look at that! Pharaoh with the ultimate coming in here to Gladiator, but there's just not enough mana for the pebbles uh, to do anything about it. He's going to go down anyways despite Malphus coming down on top of Pebbles' head. And uh, the Hellboy <laughs> that is going to be enough to take him out, but a good deny. That's two kill denies now for Vitality Gaming. These guys are not playing around at all. Yeah, you know, I didn't expect much out of them, but they're proving to be a very strong team, apparently. And I'm kind of impressed. But the uh, Flint went in Alchemist's Bone, which doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever why you'd do that. But with complete free farm, it's, it, you know, it's debatable, but I'd rather him go, you know, straight Geo or BK, uh, Shrunken Head. More of the typical ranged agility carry setup, but as opposed to yeah, I, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen an alchemist bones. Yeah, it's never used unless, like you know, you're in a pub, which makes no sense why he'd get it. But hey, if you know they win, I guess that is the reason for it. It is a best of three series, so uh, don't count them quite out of the series yet. Now, you were we were mentioning a little bit here about items. Uh, we do have some pings going down. We are going to find Chipper here at the rune spawn. They're going to be tossing right to that Feral. Look at the coordination right there. Feral is going to take a lot of damage. I'm not too sure if Slither is actually going to be able to kill him. And look at the ultimate coming out of that Megmas. Just takes down the Slither. Two quick kills. Nice and easy for Vitality Gaming right there. And Leather even going to be chasing out Gladiator out of the this top lane or maybe not maybe a little bit of miscommunication there but we do have an invisible pebble as he is going to come up here he's going to try to combo him down gladiator doesn't have that vanguard quite yet wow did i just say vanguard black the helm of the black legion what is wrong with me today but now that's not going to be a kill but nine to five it's looking uh, really good for vitality gaming now we were trying to talk a little bit about items we're about to hit the 15 minute mark and we noticed alchemist bones on the flint beastwood uh, i still only see striders and bottle here on the pebbles but uh, do we have any other big items around here none whatsoever now pebbles is almost close to his blink he's halfway ish but really there's there's nothing at all for items Oh man, look at that. Fuzzy Smurf denying the Pebbles who foolishly decided to go in on both the Gladiator and the Slither trying to get, uh, I don't know, some kind of kill there. But look at that, just two kills right now. Almost a third. Uh, good dodge there by the by Fuzzy Smurf. But look at the team just chasing him down. They really want blood at this point. Pharaoh is going to get that Kraken ultimate. I'm not too sure he's going to get out of this as well. But just sloppy positioning on that uh, initiation from from pebbles so so much for getting close to that portal key that's gonna set him back a good 300 gold or so the kraken skill build is definitely boggling my mind i don't know why he doesn't have one in torrent torrent's a very strong ability 
He should only have one in charge, one in torn, and then level his splash. It's... I don't know why you don't want two in charge this early on. It's a good ability, but having one in torn and maxing your splash is definitely much more effective than having two in charge and none in torn. I and don't if you know look what to at you, Kirby sir. Chan, that gladiator, he only has one in whip and two in showdown. I don't know. You're supposed to level whip before pitfall, but he probably more skilled than I am, so I'm not exactly <laughs> going to argue it. Well, uh, you might want to argue it or not, but he is. Looks like he's going to get out of this kill, at least for now. We still don't have that portal key on Pebbles, and he's just beefy enough to get out of that. But we're going to toss out the Pharaoh. Wow, doing a little bit of a tower dive there. Great toss, though, by the Pebbles. Takes down uh, that uh, Gladiator. But we did also have a Hellbringer go down. I do believe Flint was the one that picked up that kill. Uh, no, sorry, not Flint. It was the Witch Slayer, the Pimp Slayer himself, picking up that kill. 12 to 8 is the score. So we do have some kills here now for Lion, but it just doesn't seem like the coherent team is actually working as a team. A very fragmented kind of fights here. Yeah, the sniper hasn't really done. I don't. I haven't seen him in too much team fight action. He has so 500, 600 gold per minute, which isn't. Ins he has um. Frostburn now also, on top of his Alchemist Bone and Ghost Marchers, with 120 creep kills. His farm is very, very good. That's close to missing zero creeps per wave. And he has a kill? Two kills, and no deaths, and two assists. Wow, he is really racking it up, isn't he? Three of the Hellborn heroes have under, you know, a thousand HP. So it's going to be very, very bad next team fight. I'm um, just looking at the Pebbles. He has 1,800 gold right now. We're uh, you know, more or less 350 gold from that portal key. And then we're really going to start seeing some uh, really good initiation. As you said, they are under 1,000 hit points. So we still got that Hellbringer. And look at Slither, 758 hit points right now. And uh, that's, that's going to be really hurting once we get that portal key going. Yeah, definitely. And if Magnus and Witch Slayer somehow to get get a portal key before the game's over, it's going to be very, very, very good for the Legion team. Having three, four heroes that can initiate, compared to, you know, one hero that can initiate, it's um, not good for them. Well, variety is the spice of life. It's always better to have more than one of something. But right now, yeah, 12-8, almost 19 minutes into this game. We do have a big cluster here in the mid. It's like watching an all-random, all-mid game as uh, nobody really wants to leave their two areas. Oh, what are you doing, Magmus? Uh, that didn't work at all. He tried to use his ultimate. I guess he failed there. But out comes the Malphus. We are going to go down here on the Chipper. But somebody's getting insta-gave there in the mid. It is that Pimp Slayer. Look at that. Kraken ultimate. He's going to get tossed right back. He's going to go down to this Flint. Flint living at what? One hit point? One hit point indeed because of that Poison Nova. And it does look like the Gladiator will survive. So out of all that madness, two kills to one for Team Lion. And, uh, you know, they're just going to start chipping away at that experience and gold deficit. The Legion still leads it by 3,000 each. That's Snot Rocket. Almost took out Kirby Chan. But we don't have any kind of mana left on the Pharaoh to follow this up. The defensive glyph going out. It is in deny range. We do have the Pimp Slayer coming back as well as Pebbles. That's going to chase off this entire team. I don't know why Malphus didn't try finishing off the tower. It's at 56 hit points, but um, it's kind of just running away for no apparent reason. So, okay, bye Malphus. And yeah, we're probably going to get a tower deny in the mid. Now, during that team fight, Flint lived with 1 HP. You know, we've all seen that, and if Kraken would have had one in his queue, like I was saying earlier, he could have finished off the Flint, and possibly the Pebble. But instead he's deciding to get three in charge now, and none in Torrent. Also looking at like skill builds, one... we have zero in Unholy Shackles. I know, I'm very disappointed in some of the skill builds I'm seeing in this game. Hmm. 
Well, tower deny going down. Uh, the first tower kill of the game being awarded... Oh, sorry, second tower kill of the game. First one of the Legion. Uh, T-Swift picked that up up top, and a tower deny there in the mid. And we have, like, what, four hero denies sitting on Vitality Gaming as well. Now we do have a little bit... There's the portal key with the pebbles. Just throws down the damage on that chipper, and chipper's not going to be getting out of that, but a great Kraken ultimate just really delayed that. I do think pebbles is going to get out of that A-OK, -okay, though. I can't really say the same right now for the other team. If we got uh, Flint Beastwood just kiting this Hellbringer. I don't know where Flint actually went. Now he's getting good... It He's chased, chased by Kirby Chan. Kirby Chan runs the other way, and we do indeed take out that Slither and the Hellbringer. And I, I'm still a little confused as to what Kirby Chan's doing. Any, any idea? I have no idea what he's doing. He didn't really do much to that team fight. He used his ultimate, and that's about it. Well, he was chasing down Flint, and then chose to run away, and got kited by Flint, and then got abandoned. Really, and. We'll have two more kills, so Vitality up 17-11, and we're all kind of questioning, what is what, what is going on here? T-Swift just spent, you know, 2,300 gold, so he has something big in the bank. He has Rift Shards level 1 on the career at 22 minutes. His farm is incredible right now, with 500 gold per minute. 516 gold a minute, far and above anyone else in this game. Just look at the comparisons. 276 on Swindle Melons, who is arguably uh, the the closest the Hellborn have right now to that Flint Beast. Where they were pretty neck and neck for those creep kills, but up four kills and about 50 creeps or so. That's uh, that's that's pretty disheartening right now for the Hellborn, as they are almost literally stuck on their side of their of of the river. Yeah, they definitely are. I'd say they're... I don't want to say the game's over, but they need to start playing much better than what they are. Their teamwork is, you know, absolutely awful right now, and they're not playing as a team, they're playing as individual players, which never results well. There is no I in team, as the saying goes. But, okay, so we're 23 minutes into this game. We're up 7,000 experience, 6,000 gold for Team Vitality. Pebbles, he has himself a portal key, a bottle, as well as a strider. The only thing left really for him would be... Hmm, let's see, mana battery or that, uh, or the chalice with uh, spell shards, and he's kind of set for life. Flint Beastwood with the rift shards. The alchemist bones, I guess, did pay off, um, because his attack speed is pretty up there. Now with a crit, especially with a slow, it's going to just start racking up the damage there. Witch Slayer is kind of just doing the whole support thing, which is cool. Pharaoh with the Helm of the Black Legion and his Steam Boots. Kind of curious as to what his next big item pickup is going to be. It's either likely going to be, a, what, a barbed armor or the... It's not the Codex. What's the other one? The book. Puzzle Box? Yes, that one. As we do see, Malph has come down. Oh, great save there by the Pebbles onto uh, this Pharaoh. It looks like he's going to be getting out of this. I can't say the same for Witch Slayer, though, as, uh, as he goes down. Flint is in and around the place, but I wouldn't really stay there too safely. And look at that. Magmus using the Invis trick to get out of that. He is going to get hit by uh, the, the, the Pitfall. And, oh, <laughs> that might even be a kill right now on the Kraken. That is going to be a kill on the Kraken. T-Swift picking that up. Uh, oh so God. he's looking good. The fight is not over, though. Pebbles is back with full HP and mana. It's just oh kind of God. speechless at this point. As we see the first genocide of the game come out 25 minutes in. Um, that puts us now to score 22-12 to 12 for Vitality Gaming. Flint getting away again. Again, with one hit point. And uh, it does look like Magvis, you know, he did some great juking through that forest, and he actually survived that in fight more or less with about 40 or 50 hit points of his own. So, well done to Vitality in that fight right there. The teamwork from Vitality is incredible. Pebbles, you know, tossing people out of the team fight and letting them live like he did Pharaoh, which is just really good teamwork and coordination. And I'm very impressed for being, you know, a very low-key team. They're doing very well against a team of some, you know, high
high tier players such as Swindle Melons and Wack. You heard it here first, folks. Asway is impressed. That that's got to count for something. Well, while we do let the Hellborn here recoup a little bit, uh, Flint Beastwood's going to take a tower. Unless they're going to use... Uh, nope, no defensive glyph used, but look at that! We do have Magmus finding uh, a Kraken up on the hill. Kraken, his items consist of total steam boots as well as the Helm of the Black Legion. His farm is definitely hurting a little bit. We still have uh, the Staff of the Master trying to be built here for Chipper, but he just doesn't have the gold, it seems, to finish it up. And really, it's just kind of the same overall message here for the entire Hellborn team. The items are still kind of the Tier 1 items, as in we, we don't really have any kind of like follow-up past the initials. And that might happen to be because they're down 14,000 gold uh, compared to the Legion here at this point. I mean, it's about 14,000 gold, 14,000 experience. Those are some pretty deep holes to start climbing out of. You know, they're, they're really deep holes, like you were saying. But, you know, it's possible, but I doubt it's going to happen. As, you know, we just noticed in spec chat, uh, the sniper has rift shards level 4. And a thousand gold saved up. Pharaoh also has no barbed armor. It's, uh, it's looking pretty bad for Lion. We got some mass pinging going down here at the Congor. I think that uh, the Hellbringer was trying to, to tank it. It didn't quite work as the damage was pretty spread overall. Look at Pebbles finding! Oh, what a great charge out of that Kraken as uh, he kind of misses all the damage. Malph is going down, going to get some stuns off, but the Hellbringer himself will go down. The Kraken also getting caught there in the mummy's walls and tossing up someone. It is that Slither. He's going to go down. And look at this Magmas. He's just going to toss out that ultimate for, for no apparent reason. Down goes that gladiator, and this is going to be their second genocide of the game. And I think that's that's a that's a concede right there. Dude, stay with me. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm here. The game the Lions just played poorly. They had no idea how to skill build their heroes and. I'm really disappointed. They're they're much better than that, and hopefully next game, you know, they bring it around and start winning again. Or at least win a game out of the best of three. It is a best of three, so we will be going straight on to game number two. Uh, our cameraman Trace here, uh, you might as well just leave it rolling, so to speak. And we will see you guys in game number two here of the Jin Gaming round of 16 of Lion versus Vitality Gaming.